using some geometries, some instancing, some camera placement, etc. Uh, so what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to start out by clearing out all of our nodes on screen. And we are going to add a stop and we're going to pick a box. We're going to take that box and we're going to add a transform. And we're going to add our favorite, which is a null. <clears throat> At the end of this chain, we are going to add a geometry. And this is always the best to what you do is basically, again, as a review, is if you're on the outlet node, you right click and you select geometry. And this will bring you right into the geometry. And it basically puts everything inside of the geometry with an in and out. So we have our, our box, our transform, and null, and our geometry. And what we're going to add is a another um, composition which is going to be our camera and we're going to add our render out network so basically we can see we can actually see that box in there there's no light in there and i'm going to discuss this in a minute but we have our basic network right here and one of the things that i like to do is I like to add a constant so I can always make sure that my reses are um, appropriate so I can switch my res to different resolutions and different displays, etc. So we're going to take this and we are going to uh, call this resx for our first section. And we're going to add another one and say res y. And I'm going to do this at 1920 at 1080 and basically another thing is once i click here and i press <clears throat> actually if i just press c on the keyboard it's going to give you just a little color palette and i always like to make sure that mine is uh black for res and i'm going to rename this to res and then i will have this within my network to reference at any point um, and one of the things you can do is you can always select view and you'll have this little res window that pops out. And our first thing that we're going to change is we are going to change our common resolution, which is 1280 by 720. And I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080. So <clears throat> um, we have our box, we have our simple geometry, and we have a camera. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to add some instancing. And so how we would do an instance is there's a couple of different ways, but first we're going to pick a grid. So if we add an operator, we go to SOP and we go to grid. This will give us our grid note. And what you do is if you press the plus button, and you select into this frame and hit W, it shows you the wireframe of the grid, right? So um, the other thing too is, <clears throat> so this kind of gives you like where it is in space. And as you can see, like this isn't affecting the geometry over there yet, but it's showing you how many rows and columns are in this grid. And we are going to change this to five rows and five columns. So basically we have a simple type of grid right here, and this is gonna set the standard for where our instancing is. We're gonna take this <coughs> and we're gonna add another null, and we're gonna name this null instance. Right now we have our box, we have our basic instance, we have our res, and we have our our camera and our render out node. So in our geometry, if we go to instance, and it's the first um, out of the different tabs up here, it's the third one over and we turn on instancing. And we are going to take this instance and we are going to add it to our translate operator. Now we have an instance, 
we have it on our translate operator and we are going to translate the x based on p position one and the y on position two and the z on position three so right now <clears throat> you can see in our little node network we have a lot of cubes and you can't see what's going on with them because cubes are actually on top of each other so they're basically going all over the place but that's why I added this transform. So in this transform, if we scale this down to, let's say, 0.2, you can see now we have a selection of boxes. Now our boxes in this example are going this way, and I want to switch them instead of the XY plane to the ZX plane. And basically, this is now you can see it's you're looking straight at it, so our boxes are behind you. And so one of the things that I like to do is add another operator, which is in, under our, our components, and add a null. And once you add a null, this is going to give you the opportunity to always position your camera looking straight at the zero, zero origin. So we're going to take our camera. And we're going to have the camera look at the null. So I have the camera selected. I'm going to drag the look at into the look at box. And now our camera is always looking at this axis. And um, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to add another camera just to show you what is going on in here. And this is what I use as a reference a lot of the times, is I'll take the camera, I'll use this to see where we are in space. So you can see this is camera two, and our first camera is over there, which is outside by the translate of five. And if you see this, if we move this translate into, let's say four, you're gonna see the camera keeps getting closer and closer. So, what I want to do is I want to pivot this camera up on uh, the plane. And so I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to adjust this to, let's say, two. And you can see now we can see where our cubes are and where our instances are. So this is giving us a little bit of a, you know, an opportunity to see where the camera is pointing. It's pointing down at these. And that gives you the opportunity to see outside of just that straight on view of where everything is. So we have our basic network here. Now we can see where our instances are. We have our instances. So basically we have five different boxes because we selected five rows and five columns. And so we have you know that selection right there. Uh, and one of the cool things that we can do uh, is have these little instances move. So in this line, I'm going to click an insert operator and I'm going to add a noise. And right off the bat, you can see that our instances are now moving to that noise, right? So they're moving in space, they're adjusting out of our camera view um, and everything is, you know, kind of just moving with noise parameters, which um, then we will assign later on. So now we have a couple different things. Again, everything's going through our camera, it's going through our geo. We see it in our render view. If we, if we pop this render view open, you can see it in the background. Um, as I pointed out in class, another uh, way to kind of uh, see what's going on in your camera angle is if you split your window, and we're going to take this and we're going to say top viewer. And this is going to give us the view of what's going on like in our output window. <clears throat> I'm going to add one more thing at the end of the chain. I'm going to add a null and I'm going to name this BG. So that's going to be our background. And um, so we have to, if we select this right now, it's going to show up in our background. It's going to show over there, but I don't want to see it in this background. So if I right click and I go to display and I go to check off background tops, you can see now it's just in this window. So this gives us a reference of what is going on in our output nodes. 
So this is kind of cool, but the other thing that we want to do is we want to add um, some color to these different um, instances of cubes that we have going. So we're going to add a noise, and we're going to do a noise in the tops. In our noise right now, we have obviously a lot of different things going on. And so we don't want to have all these variables. We want to have just a couple of them. So I'm going to go into my res and I'm going to add one more column here and I'm going to call this grid. And in this grid, I'm going to say, I want a grid of five, which is eventually going to be five by five. So going back into our noise and into our common, I'm going to change our resolution to five and I'm going to change it to five. So now we have a five by five resolution and we're going to change a couple different things in this node. Instead of input smoothness, we're going to go nearest pixel and our viewer smooth, smooths us to nearest pixel again. And you can see now we have a kind of grid based on our noise and there's some different colors in there or some just black and white right now. So if we go to our noise and we turn on uh, turn off monochrome, so now we have a color palette. So in this noise, we're going to add a null. And in our null, we are going to change this null. And again, it has the same types of things. So we're going to say this to nearest pixels so we can see nearest pixels. And we're going to go into our geo. And this is where we're going to go into instance two. So instance two opens up a color palette down here at the bottom. And what we're going to do here is we're going to name this really quick color instance. And so now where we're in our geo and we're back in here in our instance, we can drag this color operator into this right here and we are going to pull the r and the g values off that and you can see right now in this window because there's no light in there whatsoever you can see that the, the, the cubes have changed colors and we can see it in our geometry window right here but we don't have um anything that is lighting this space. And there's a couple reasons why. Instead of adding a light, I'm going to add a constant. And in that constant, um, we are going to use this to give light to the cubes. So a constant is a material, and this material, we are going to uh, basically drag it right on top of the geometry. We drag it on the geometry, we are going to hit material, and you can see and how these things are going to switch. So what we're going to do is we are going to use some OSC from Ableton. And in the file management uh, for this course, you know, under our Google Drive, I've added a couple different things. So if we go to our finder here, and we look under our Google Drive, you can see that I able added a connection kit. And this connection kit, we're going to drag into Ableton and we are going to use that. Uh, and basically that gives us something to send OSC. So we're gonna open up Ableton and in Ableton, what you would do is under your, your user library, we would drag in this connection kit. And once we're in the connection kit of the user library, it's going to add that into your Max for Live library. Now I already have it installed, um, but basically in your Max for Live library, now it's going to give you the opportunity to use OSC. So the biggest thing we're going to do is we are going to basically type OSC up in our little search window in Ableton, and it's going to give you some different types of um, effects and different types of things that we can use uh, to send OSC values from Ableton into Touch Designer. And one of the things that we are going to pick is we're going to pick OSC send and we're going to add that to a MIDI track. 
So if I put this uh, here, I'm going to switch this view to this, and we're going to add OSC in here. <clears throat> and this is giving us some parameters that we are eventually going to shift over into uh, Touch Designer. So one of the things I like to do in Ableton is I like to basically take this and group this. So right off the bat, we have an opportunity to map these into macros. And I know one thing that we want to change within our noise is we are going to change um, the amplitude value. So I'm going to basically right click on this macro. I'm going to go to rename and I'm going to name this amp. <clears throat> and in our OSC message, I am going to name this amp as well. Whoops, put it spelled the right way. So now we have our OSC, which is going to be sending out into Touch Designer. We're going to map this right into here. And basically, anytime we change this value in our little macro, it is going to send a message to Touch Designer. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to basically um, create a clip with an Ableton. So if you select a clip and you hold down Command Shift M, now we have a new clip. So this clip is actually one bar, and we're going to change this length to let's say four bars. So now we have a clip that has four bars, and um, in those four bars, we're going to use this to make some automation data so we can send into Touch Designer. And this is, so if we go to this little automation tab outside of notes right here, and you can see our little value for amp already changed, so it assigned that value. <clears throat> because this happened to be, if you look under here, here's our different macros, but we want to adjust the value for amplitude. And right now it's basically, you know, it's sitting in the middle. So we're going to we're going to draw a couple different things just so we can send some data. And I'm going to select this. And if I hold down my mouse and select and I double tap, I can get these different waveforms down here. And I'm just going to pick a basic LFO. This basic LFO is going to it's going to start at um, the value of 61. It's going to go up to 127. It's going to go down to zero and it's going to go back to 61. So we're going to take this. And we are going to duplicate this a couple of times. So we have a big four bar LFO. Um, and actually, you know what I'm going to do to just show how it's different. So we're going to take this last section right here and we're going to add a different one. So we are going to add a triangle waveform. So you can see we're going to start with an LFO. We're not going to finish our loop right here. And we're going to go down to here. But if we click this button right here, we take away that we're basically Doing our LFO, we're starting, going back down to zero, and we're going here up on our triangle to the peak, and then down to the bottom. And to make this so it's smooth, we have our value of 63. So we would like to take this value, and it's actually all the way over there. You can see it. So that's the other value. Is if we just, again, unselect this dot, unselect this dot by clicking it, and you have to get way in there. And it doesn't want it to happen because it's stuck in the corner. There we go. So now we're making like a complete circuit of 63, 63, going down uh, to the end, right? <clears throat> so we have some values here. And if we play this clip, it's just going to be going through some automation. You know, there's nothing in here. There's no music in here. Haven't put any tracks in yet. We're going to rename this to um, OSC. And this basically gives us... Um, that value and it's going to actually send out into touch designer and our host uh, port or IP address right now is our own computer so that's localhost which is 127.0.0.1 and we're sending through port 2346 if we go back into touch designer we can see that we have this noise just going you know doing its thing so we are going to add uh, another operator, and what we're going to add is OSC in. 
And um, our OSC in is going to then pick up, we need to find this network port. And if you go back into Ableton, and I said what it was before, but it's 2346. So this port 2346 needs to go to um, inside of Touch Designer for this port. So right now Touch Designer is looking at 10,000. So we need to change this to 2436. I feel like I put the wrong one in. So we go back. Um, oh, I gotta go to live here. Uh, 2346. 2346. And so 2346. 2346. And now you can see we are receiving a open sound control message from Ableton. So we're automating in Ableton, and this is giving us that value, and it's giving us a value um, between the points of you know zero and one, basically. And uh, so that automation that's going back and forth is giving us this. And so what we can do, um, which is pretty cool, is we can basically go into our noise, and we can take this value. And I think what we should do is always put a null at the end. Just in case we put anything else in this chain, we're going to name this uh, amp and we're going to go into our noise and we are going to press the plus button on here, take our value, drag it over here, and do a chop reference. And you can see now the cubes are moving based on the OSC values that are being sent from Ableton. So we're, we're, so we're actually manipulating some stuff in here in 3D space, which is kind of cool. Um, so we have this little network. We've done something simple. We've taken an OSC message from Ableton. We've sent it. And one of the other things that we can do is, let's say, as, as I looked in here and I said, look at we have this opportunity to seed our colors and change our colors. So let's assign this value. So if we go back into, uh, into Ableton, and we go back into our little OSC send, and we say, let's create another one. So we're going to create color. And we're going to name this color. So we know our OSC message is coming out. We're going to name this little macro into um, color as well. And then one of the things when I'm using um, these different things in Ableton is I like to kind of give them a little color so I know what's going on. So our amplitude is actually sending uh, to a SOP, right? Because it's changing that noise and our color is going to be uh, changing a top. So we're, we're color coding these as a little bit in like in touch as iron. So these are our two colors. And then we, these are the two values that we have. Um, and in Ableton, again, this is an Ableton course, but you have these macros where you can add a bunch of different macros and you can also take and take them away. So we're only looking at a, a certain number of values. So I'm gonna set four for right now. And so we'd go back into our OSC, our little, um, our little um, clip here that we have. We double click it and we can see our color. It's already selected color because we were on it and our color is nothing. If we go back to AMP, we can see our automation data that was doing our AMP. And so for our color, one of the things that in seeding of uh, noises is um, you'll see if we just put a value right here and we kind of do like a little bit of a triangle, you'll see that it's going to jump for these values up to 37 and it's going to shift through them like really quick. So I'm going to show you this as an example in the beginning. And then I'm just going to create a couple different um, uh, square waves right here. And so that's going to kind of give us like a little bit of a full value. So if I select in here, pick a square wave that we have all the way on, all the way off, right? And I'm just going to take this parameter down to let's say 91 and make these even. Right? Oops. So that's an even number. I'm going to have it go back down to zero. I'm going to, let's say, just bring this one up to 57. 
I'm going to take this, go back down to zero, bring this one up to let's say 32, and you can kind of see like what I'm doing here, and we're kind of again continuing the change so there is like fluidity to it. So we have um, our different values, and you'll see how these interpolate back into Touch Designer. So we uh, go back to Touch Designer, and um, in our OSC values, it's being sent out, but we are not receiving it yet in the OSC. So we have to make sure that that is actually sending it out. And um, so let's replay our clip. Let's double check what's everything that's going on in here. We have, uh, oh, I know what we did. Uh, back in this value right here, we made something, but we never mapped it. So we have to map this value of color to our actual macro. And so now our color and our automation that we had here before is actually going to be mapping back out into um, Touch Designer. You can see there it is. Right. So in our, so we are getting a couple different values here. And in our noise, like I said, when we change these seed values, these seed values are going all the way up to a thousand from one. So one of the things we can do is, and you can see these are coming in as decimal points. So we need to address that. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a, a uh, select. And why we're doing this is because we're going to actually do some math on this. So we're going to add a select. We're going to bridge this over, connect this node, and we are only going to select color. Now we're picking our color value. And um, within that color value, we are going to add a math. And in that math from the range of you, if, if you see that we are pushing through, we are pushing through these decimal points, basically of anything between uh, 0 0.0 and 1. So we're going to change that same value. And we know our seeds are going to be between 1 and 999, right? <clears throat> so you can see now it's changing these and it's also giving us uh, some different types of looks right here. Now, one of the things we see is in, is, and we'll apply this so you can see how this works and how it kind of looks a little jittery and we can fix that. So we're gonna go to our noise and we're gonna take this color and we are going to apply this and we probably should do something right here, is add another null. So we'd never break our chain down the road. And um, we're gonna go back into our noise. We're gonna take this value of this null, and we're gonna apply it to the seed in our noise top. And you can now see that the cubes are manipulating through color. They are shifting around based on our information that is going through Ableton. And actually, I like that. It's kind of cool. So we have a little bit of a dancey thing going on. It's changing some cubes, changing some colors, um, doing some different types of things. So I'm fine with that right now. Um, it's okay to me. And so there we go. So we have a simple little chain sending data from Ableton, which is, again sending our values through our OSC and into Touch Designer, right? So what else can we do with this? Um, we basically can do a couple, a number of different things. I mean, we're doing something simple and, but we want to kind of like affect some different parameters of this, you know? So that's like, how can we do it? Um, you can always add different geometries, but I think the point of this little lesson is basically interconnecting things getting things connected through OSC, having those uh, port numbers be the same that they're in Ableton, and um, again, shifting some stuff in this space, right? So let's close this view right now so we have some more space to work. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we are going to add um, a, a camera that is going to uh, pivot around this journey, right? So like right now, if you see, if we bring this back in the backdrop 
and we go to backdrop tops, we can see our space right here. We can close this camera out. Um, we just see this, this head on view. So this is what's going to be like rendered out if we made something. But what we can do is we can take this and um, basically change this a little bit so the camera is spinning around these. So what we're going to do here is we are going to add um, a SOP and we're going to pick a, uh, a circle. And this is going to basically create a dolly system for our camera to, tran to uh, move around. And you can see right now, of course, this is, we're looking straight on. And this is basically, it's going, the camera would be traveling this way through this uh, parameter of the Y and, um, you know, these axes looking around it. So what we want to do is we actually want to spin it around the box. So we're going to change our plane into an X, Y, Z. So now we can see that this would be level with the space and um, it's going to also uh, basically, so we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to put a transform behind this just in case we ever want to change um, what the distance of this is. So we can increase the distance, change the difference, you know, uh, position it in 3D space, do a couple different things. And then we're going to um, add a null. And we're going to call this null um, our camera dolly. So we have some different things here. We have the circle, we have a transform, we have camera dolly. In our camera, we have this thing that's called follow the path SOP. This is a SOP, and we're going to follow the camera basically on this camera dolly. So we're going to take our little null, put this in the camera dolly. And now you can see that our camera is looking at the space. It sees it, and if we position and we go through this, you can see that we are actually pivoting this in real space, right? Or real time. So the camera, and to show another example is, if I add another camera, so we can view within this space, you can see our camera is like up there in the window right now. So let's change this view a little bit so we can bring it in. And um, we can actually, display so you can see our circle in there so you can see where the camera so the camera remember we positioned up high so it's following this loop around um our little transform so that's actually using it as a dolly imagine if there was a stick up here and the camera is attached and um so you can see within this as we go around the camera is actually spinning around that circle right so it's going 360 degrees around that circle so um, a couple different things. It would be cool. We could do some little Python here. And if we typed in, um, uh, you know, expression. It would basically just automatically just keep spinning around the space. So it's giving you, again, this little um, crazy thing that's happening. Um, if we if we wanted to do something to slow it down, let's say we divide by four, we can see that we're dividing this little camera dolly by four, right? So now we're just spinning around 360 space, looking at these cubes. But one of the things you notice is it's jittery. And that's because our, um, basically, our circling has 40 divisions. And if you think of polygons, uh, in 3D space, and we we're covering this a little bit in the lecture, is it's basically straight lines of 40 that are making up this circle. So if we increase this to 200, you can see that it already smooths it out. So now we have more divisions going around our circle. So it's a nice and smooth transform going around these cubes, right? So that kind of looks cool. Um, but one of the things that what I think would be even cooler is if we sent some OSC messages from Ableton also positioning this in space. So we can go and um, go back to Ableton and say, let's send some OSC values. Now we're doing this to no music whatsoever. Um, so I made um, 
just a couple stems and we'll pull these up and drop them in here from the class and basically then we have a little bit of music to listen to because it's always cool when you have music that you can uh, kind of edit how you want things to look based on the music so right now we were just like putting in some values um, but we really didn't have like a good um, take on like what was you know what other things that we were gonna add right so so we're gonna put in some tracks here and we're gonna create a little session we're gonna loop this <laughs> and um, we can play it and we got our little our little ambient tune here right so one of the things in Ableton is we created this in a clip view. So you have to go from this clip view and basically take this little data that we made. If you're going back into arrangement view, if you, if you click on it and hold down tab, you can drag this into our window up here. So this is now our OSC value. It's dragged between Ableton and um, it's always going to, as we start it, it's going to play and send that OSC value. We have our one clip that, again, we made as four bars that we, um, you know, it's basically over in Touch Designer. As you can see, the four bars are happening. It hasn't, it doesn't change color because when we go back, changing color in the beginning, it's only doing it for the four bars. So what we want to do is we want to basically duplicate this out. So this is going to be our whole session. But this also gives you the opportunity to, in any of these things, come back and edit the um, automation values and uh, kind of work for it that way. So again, this is an Ableton class, but I'm just showing you how data is being um, presented between both of them. So uh, we'll just let this play in the background for, or well, hold on, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create another OSC message um, within our little OSC generator here. And we're going to name this um, camera position. And within our camera position, now we have another value. So we have to create another macro. We're going to rename this to cam position and we'll just give it a color of let's say gray and we're going to map this into that position right so what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our clips here and we are going to consolidate these clips and then we are going to draw in some animation now for um, our newly added camera so our camera position um, and so we're going to go over here and we're going to take our camera position and we're basically going to um, do the same thing as what we kind of did there before is we're going to select these. We're going to pick a, um, a triangle. So we have our automation that's going to be going back and forth. And it's going to affect basically our ramp of the triangle, right? It's going to show that within um, our OSC values. And you can see slowly raising up and slowly going down by camera position. We'll keep this plan, and if we look over here, we now have our camera position that is going back and forth in OSC. So um, one of the things that we can do is um, we could easily drag this value right over into our camera and apply it to our position and first we're going to wipe out this little um, ABS time, ABS second thing. So we're going to do our position and um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more thing, which I'm going to add another select. I'm going to isolate this so it is only going to pick up the camera position. I'm going to add a, um, a null at the end of this. 
Let me name this camera Cam Poe Dishon. And go into our camera, and basically, I'm going to take this value right here. And I'm going to drag this on our camera position within our camera. So now I can see Ableton is actually um, driving the camera data within um, Touch Designer. So we got a couple of cool things here. We got um, some boxes, some cubes that are doing some instancing within space. Um, we are not using a light. We are just using a constant uh, actually to... Um, to light the scene. And this gives us an opportunity to uh, play around with, with lights in general later on. Uh, but you can also do different things within the constant, like we could turn on wireframing. Um, and, you know, all these are now cubes that are little wireframe cubes within our constant. So we can create some different types of networks, um, some different some different things going on right there, right? So we'll just keep this. This is kind of a, a brief example of what is happening within this space. Um, to add on to what we kind of did in class as a review. So we'll close this out. And one of the good things that we can do again too is we can select all these. So we have all of our nodes selected. And if we right click and we do clap selected we have now created our own little thing within here our own little base talks that we can share we're going to call this uh boxes and i need to i want to see this display right here so i'm going to go into common and instead of this out i'm going to call this bg because that's what i named it in the node and now we have a nice little network of little boxes that are transforming in the Ableton space, right? So that will wrap up a little bit. This is a little bit of a brief for that. And uh, hopefully this helps with anybody that is struggling or anybody that was confused with anything. And we will go from there. Uh, thanks again, and I will see you in the next class.